Hey y'all, I'm Tatum Harville and I'll be doing your ENH sports interview. The swim team wrapped up a very successful season in the Bluegrass Mountain Conference Championships this past week. With several school records broken, personal bests, and great new talent, the team is transitioning well to the Division II level. And joining us from the team today, we have junior swimmer Antonio Walters. Antonio, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And so, finishing up their first event at the D2 level, the swim team found themselves ranked above Mars Hill. And as someone who has been a part of this program for the past three years, what did that feel like for you to rise to the next level and find yourself just as competitive as before? Did this come as a surprise? Did you know that your team was well equipped and you were just ready for the challenge? What did that feel like for you? I think at first we were a little bit kind of, uh, kind of shell-shocked, I would say, kind of going to this D2 level, especially going against Queens, Lenore Ryan, Wingate, mm -hmm. knowing that they're a lot faster than us and everything. But I think we went into it with a good mindset. And seeing that we finished seventh out of eighth, getting in front of Mars Hill, I think that really boosted our confidence and Absolutely. boosted our also positive mindsets. So I think that really helped our team kind of morale overall that whole weekend and knowing that we can actually beat these teams and actually do well against them. Absolutely. That's great. And so not only were you all competitive, mm -hmm. but the team set some school records as well. Mm -hmm. So did that come as a, as a surprise? And can you tell us a little more about that? I think at the beginning of the season, I didn't really know what to expect out of these freshmen. And mm -hmm. these freshmen really surprised me throughout the whole season. Um, I know a couple of names like Matthew Gawk, Peyton Neighbors, Aiden Quatorimus. Mm -hmm. um, i trying to think who else. Kyle Berry. They all set some new records this year and they did really well. And so I'm really happy they were able to kind of forget the past of the record board, but also put new names on the board. So it was great. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. And so you yourself, Antonio, mm -hmm. have been coming back from a season of COVID and having to build back up yeah. to where you were, were before. And you ultimately ended up finishing the season with a personal best in the 200 free event, which congratulations. Thank That's you. awesome. But what did that feel like for you? What did the extra preparation look like behind mm -hmm. the scenes in order to get you to this point? Well, behind the scenes, we would get up at 6 a.m. for practice. We would practice for two hours, uh, pretty much transition from prime. Like for me, I'm a butterflyer, mm -hmm. so I'd practice that a lot. Um, we would do a lot of distance sets and pretty much build our stamina up for these championship races. And then before the race, I kind of went into it with a good mindset. I'm like, I know I'm going to win this. I'm going to do well. And a kind of funny backstory, uh, Eli Rodriguez, one of my teammates, he kind of challenged me a little bit, saying if I get this time, uh, he would race one of the events that he usually doesn't swim, yeah. which I was actually one second off, but I was able to still drop 13 seconds from my original time and do well throughout this whole meet. That's amazing. That's yeah. so awesome. But kind of bridging off that and mm -hmm. looking at the work ethic that you have just really put into this program in order to get that time for yourself, that mm -hmm. best time for yourself. When you look at your team and you think about buying into this culture of working as hard as you can, doing what you need to do in order to get to the point that you all have gotten to, how have you all developed a team mindset with new additions to the team this season? And mm -hmm. how have you developed and cultivated a successful culture together? So at the beginning of the season, we kind of came together as a group and did some team bonding. Uh, games and everything to get to know each other and then that kind of helped us throughout the season. Then once our training trip in Florida came around, it was in December, uh, we did a lot more team bonding. We pretty much lived together in a whole house and that really helped us get to know each other more, helped us I guess kind of bond more as more as a teammates but more as a brother and sister love and that kind of helped us going into the season because throughout these four days and championships we cheered on each other, we motivated each other, and whenever was someone's down, the whole team came together and was like, you got this, don't think about anything else, you got this and you're gonna win this game, uh, pretty much the meet. Yeah, absolutely, so. that's great. And you know, when we talk about developing team culture and a team mindset mm -hmm. and all the things that come with being a great successful team, most of the time those things are implemented by people that have been a part of the program day in and day out, year after year, week after week. And so for you all, you have these seniors on the team that have really just been pouring everything into the program, buying in to everything that it has to offer, and then showing that to the next generation of swimmers that are coming with you all and teaching them what that looks like to be a wasp and to do these amazing things and to do it well as a swim team. So with the three seniors that you all have leaving this year, I believe those are Kat, Blake, and Logan. How do you think that will impact the program moving forward? I really think it's going to impact the program really well. Uh, I'm going to say this right now, all three of them are my role models. Uh, they really help these freshmen out, especially through like um, going hard through the season, building them up, but also kind of helping them mature throughout the season. So next year when these new freshmen come, 
they can give the same advice that Kat, Logan, and Blake were able to give. Absolutely, and I think that I think that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. So my next question is a fill in the blank question. Okay. So the biggest misconception that people have about swimming is blank. I would say the definitely the biggest misconception is people saying that it's easy to swim, because I'm gonna be honest, I'm an athlete. I play a lot of ba baseball, basketball, swimming. Uh, I'm trying to think, soccer. Mm -hmm. And I would gotta say, swimming was the hardest practice and hardest sport I've ever played. It would always knock my breath out of me. I'd always be exhausted after practice, and I would love people that say that's easy to try to go out there and swim because I gotta say it is tough. And where do you think that misconception comes from? Like, why do you why do you think people just think swimming is easy? Like, anyone can do this. I think people think, especially like summer times, they go to the pool and they're able to swim just like going down and back, and they're not exhausted. But if you think about it, you're competing at this high level, you're getting exhausted, you're getting winded so quick because you're doing a lot of. I guess, fast twitch exercises. Yeah. And when it comes down to like, a, let's say a hundred race, uh, by the end of it, your legs are cramping and it's just, it just gets hard after a while. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Antonio, thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. It's been a whole lot of fun thank and congratulations you. on your season. Mm -hmm. Good luck for the next one. Where we'll be so excited to see how it folds out. But this concludes our sports interview for EHC TV. I'm Tatum Harville and we'll see y'all next week.